Well, hello, my YouTube family. It is 538, people. And I wasn't even pushing pedal to the metal or nothing. There was even a little bit of traffic. But here I am. Not even a quarter to. And um, I found a different way. The opposite side of the street. And then pull into the driveway. As opposed to the same side of the street where I have to make a wider turn. If it takes a couple of extra seconds to just be on the other side of the street so then I can just drive into my driveway. I drove in like, oh yeah, he's still blocking the driveway. But it, it, it didn't affect me as much. So, it's all good now. Okay, so why was I thinking that it was Wednesday? Like all day. I think, it, you know, wishful thinking. Only Tuesday, Nancy. Only Tuesday. It's already a long week. In any event, let us get on with lips of the day. And then, um, I need to tell you what I, uh, I didn't really so much witness it as overheard it. Sit down. Okay, so lips of the day. Let us start off with the liner. It is a Rimmel Lasting Finish Liner. And no, it is not Mertillo this time. This one is Cafe Olay. Right here. Lined. And... Filled, and I, I was going to toss this one today. I, this was going to be La Garbaggio. And then I reapplied, and I'm like, why was I going to throw this away? Look at it. It looks gorgeous. What is wrong with you, Nancy? This is my Revlon Color Burst Lipstick in the shade 015 Tutti Fruity. You're not going to be able to see that because it's way small. But this is Tutti Fruity. It's a melon orange or an orange melon shade. And I think this one introduced me to the oranges, the oranges that I thought I could not wear. You just have to find your right shade of orange. I think the reason why I was going to toss it is because it's not as pigmented as it used to be. It used to be very pigmented, people. But then I looked at it on my lips and I'm like, I like it, so I'm not going to toss it. It doesn't have an odor of any kind, so if it's good, it's good, okay? If, as long as it doesn't blow up my lip or anything of that nature, then this is good. So this is Tutti Fruity. Sit down. course names will be changed to protect myself as well as the innocent as always um, so there was an aide who I know I've gotten to know her um, she's just very loud she's one of the loud ones and we will call her Ilsa Ilsa is a very tall, very loud, not so much large, but a very dominating presence, black woman. And um, I guess she got called into the office. And while waiting for my supervisor, because it was my supervisor that called her into the office. Um, she began to explain to me, I didn't ask for it, people, I never do. Uh, she began, began to explain to me, you know, she started saying, well, I hope I'm not getting called in because of me hanging up on the, 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 
the um, patient that I was taking care of. Okay, first of all, why are you hanging up on a patient? Anyway, it took about a good... See, this is the one thing I don't like about my supervisor, one of the many. Um, she calls people in for an interview or whatever, especially interviews. She'll call them for an interview, let's say at 12 o'clock, but she won't see the person until 1 o'clock. Like, why are you calling the person in an hour before it's time for you to see them? So the person's just sitting there. I mean, you have paperwork to fill out. Okay, they fill it. It's not going to take a whole hour to fill out the paperwork. Why? It happened to me, too. But this is what she does. She did have an interview today at um, 2.30. person wasn't seen until 3.30. Method to her own madness, I guess. Anyway, back to the original story. So finally, Ilsa gets called in. And like I said, Ilsa has a very bombastic voice. So doors closed. <laughs> that That's... It's like talking through paper, really. So they had their meeting in the office that's like, as soon as you walk through the door behind me, go to your right, and there's an office right there. That's the conference room where meetings are held, and not all of them good. So she got called into the office by my supervisor. And I think there was a nurse who was also present. And, you know, you could hear the conversation a little bit. It started off all, you know, surface. Then it delved in a little deeper. And then I hear, well, why are you blaming it on me? I don't understand. This patient is a piece of crap. You don't understand what I have to go through with this patient. And I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. I am sure I am not the only one who heard this. This meeting lasted a good 90 minutes or so, maybe even longer. And it ended with my supervisor saying something in the effect of, Like, maybe, I, like, I want you to apologize. I want you to call and apologize or whatever. And Ilsa wasn't having it. And Ilsa said, oh, is that what you want me to do? Well, we can end this meeting right now. And I guess my supervisor said something. And Ilsa said, well, have a good day. And then she walked out. And my supervisor was slowly walking behind her. She does that in case there's going to be any kind of comeback. Thankfully, that's never happened. But in the past, before I got hired, I've heard horror stories beyond. So I got quite an earful. And it was not pretty. I knew that was the last I was going to say, see of Ilsa. I'm not going to say I'm going to miss her or anything of that nature. These very loud, very confrontational types, even though she kind of liked me, but all you have to do is blink and it could go south. It could go left. It could go whatever direction you want to call it, not in the good direction. Okay, it could go left in a minute. So Ilsa walked out. She didn't say goodbye or anything. She just kind of stormed off with my supervisor. Not storming behind her, but kind of lackadaisically just looking to make sure that she was definitely out the door. So that was uh, Tuesday morning. <laughs> that, that was the morning, people. You never know what you're going to get when you go in there. 
Life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> this job is like a box of chocolates. You never, never, ever know what you're going to get. So that's the story of that. I don't know, people. I don't know. I just need to get paid every week. That's what's just keeping me going. Every Friday is payday. If that's the only thing that's going to keep me here, then that's the only thing that's going to keep me here. I'm slowly and surely, very slowly, but also very surely, getting out of the hole that I've dug myself in while I was unemployed for half a year last year and not having any savings to speak of I'm slowly but surely replenishing so I just have to walk the straight and narrow because like I said with this this supervisor of darkness you just don't know you, you just do what she says just do what she says because it, 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 it'll benefit you and it, it'll it'll satisfy her is he doing? I think he scared himself. Do cats scare themselves? This one does on the regular. Yeah, he scared himself. He's sitting there rethinking just what just happened. Anyway, so that is it, people. That that that's really the story of the day. God only knows what tomorrow will bring. Okay. So that's really it. That's really all. Um, last night was the last episode of the HBO miniseries Chernobyl. It was a slow, slow show, but it's a true story of how Chernobyl became Chernobyl of what it is now, which is a barren wasteland just drenched in radiation and it's the story of how that radiation took effect and then at the very end they showed you the real pictures of the real people that the actors were portraying and kids were dying and and, and because their immune system just couldn't take the amount of radiation and the oldest a person who stayed in Chernobyl lived was the age of 40 and then you just dropped it it's it's just it's a sad 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 story and this is all because of greed and lies and it didn't have to happen it didn't have to happen 9-11 didn't have to happen either but that's another story for another day but humans don't seem to do well with learning from their experiences anyway before this gets really heavy this is lips of the day me like you I really do like this shade it's an orange coral it's an orange coral and the matching blush is a Sephora Pantone shade from years gone by. I don't even remember what year this was. But it was of the orange shade. And the one I'm wearing is this one. This one I'm not liking too much because it's, it's the formula I don't like of this one. It's a great shade. It's a nice bright orange. But I'm never going to wear it because it, it goes on patchy. And, oh, it's just the patchiness is ridiculous. But this is a nice, smooth shade. This one. It's a nice, smooth shade. I mean, this is a light. It's a super light swatch. But it's what I'm wearing on my cheeks. I really love this. I absolutely love this shade. There it is. This really bright orange. It's a great orange, bright orangey shade, but it's, it's very patchy. It doesn't go on smoothly. It doesn't stay on my cheeks. 
So I'm going to wear this one. And that's what it is. Let's see, was this Sephora? Pantone Universe. This Pantone shade was, well, no wonder, because this isn't really an orange. It's called Coral. This one is called Desert Flower, and this one is called Coral. Let's see, the shades are in the back. And there you have it. Color of the Year Blush Duo. And that year, I think it was 20, 2014. Hold on. I don't remember the year. Yeah, it doesn't say the year, people. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, 2012. It's right there in front of my fat face. Tangerine Tango, 2012. So there you go. This is what the packaging looked like back then. And you just slide it open. And it came like this. like and slide it back and that was it 2012 that was 2012's Pantone color of the year it's like an orange and a coral so there you have it people and I must say even though the blush is kind of fading a little bit it's okay Still gave me a pop of color, me likey, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, this color burst lipstick, tutti frutti saved itself because it turned out to not be so bad after all. And so there you go. So that is it, people. That is the story of the day. This is the lips of the day, and now it's time to max and relax for the rest of the day. I know summer is coming out, and oh, Nancy, you should go out and you should have some fun. No. To me, going out and having fun means you have a nice amount of money to cushion your fun. I don't have any money, people. So, my fun consists of 5 o'clock when I get the hell out of work. That's my fun. My drive home, I'm listening to a new radio station now. It's not PLJ anymore. It never will be ever again. Um, the new station that I'm listening to... I'm listening to CBS FM, which Scott Shannon is on CBS FM. I did not realize that. I was like, oh, half of Todd and Scott from the years gone by from PLJ. Um, I'm listening to a couple of news stations, CBS FM, and I think the one, the one I'm listening to now, which really took over for PLJ, I think it's 102.7. What is that one? In New York, people, in New York. 102.7. It's not CBS. NEW? I don't know. I think it's NEW. I'm not sure. Either way, it's the kind of music that I used to listen to when I was listening to PLJ. So I've got familiar songs, and they're even playing some nice oldies. And I'm like, not oldies, oldies, but early 90s music that, you know, radio stations after a certain time, they just don't play favorites anymore, my favorites anymore. But this station's like, oh, okay, I remember that one. I remember this one. So I'm having fun with the new radio station. And that's, that's it, people. That is it. That is all. I've got to go now. Yeah, it's time for me to go. It's time for me to go. Because you know what's happening? And I have a feeling I am not going to have fun this summer. I'm beginning to experience those summer headaches. I don't know. Am I the only one that has these summer headaches? Like when it gets too humid, even though it's not humid at all, there's a nice breeze and everything. But during the summer, for some reason, I wake up with a headache. And throughout the day, sometimes I'll have it like a headache will just start. And I, you know, I tend to, I feel it like right here. It's like a, a, a sinus kind of a headache. And I'm feeling it. I'm feeling another one now. So, and it happens only in the summer. But only in the summer, usually when it's really, really hot. And I can't really say it's really, really hot. Then again, 
I'm experiencing more hot flashes. It's not pretty when a woman gets to a certain age, people. It is not pretty. Not pretty at all. I mean, these things just come fast and suddenly. And it's like, what is happening? And yeah, that's what happens. It goes to a slow boil and then it subsides. But that slow boil, man, is so uncomfortable. It's like you're sitting in an oven. I know there's probably maybe a few men that watch my channel. So y'all have no idea what I'm talking about. But women of a certain age who watch my channel know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. Okay, I'm going now. Now I'm really going. That is it. That is all. This is Lips of the Day. Let me know what you think. Hit me up, let me know, and I will talk to you tomorrow, okay? That's it, that's all. I love you. Mwah. Bye now.